always fresh, every day. You're watching Fast Lane Daily. What happens when a maker of bat nut supercars buys a line of mild entry luxury sedans? It's the odd couple, Swedish style. We'll have more. Also, we've got specs on the US edition of the car keeping the Porsche 911 up at night. Is there a new life in store for the Dodge Viper? And is that Brad Pitt directing traffic in Siberia? All that plus commenter of the week and our two minute and change car review FLD tours. What's up everybody, I'm Derek D and you're watching Fast Lane Daily. It's Friday. Uh. Fast Lane Daily with Derek D, always fresh every day. If you know supercars, you know the name Koenigsegg, even if you can't spell it. We're talking about cars like the Koenigsegg CCR, holder of the production car speed record for about 10 minutes in 2005 and the alleged perpetrator of the fastest speeding ticket ever handed out in the U.S. at 242 miles per hour. But Koenigsegg may soon be known for a feat that's every bit as wild and extreme. New owner of Saab. The Wall Street Journal reports today a deal to sell General Motors Saab automobile could come as soon as today. The sale would finalize a critical loose end to the GM bankruptcy restructuring, but would rely on a $700 million loan from the Swedish government. Saab had been hit hard by the global economic downturn, ultimately contributing to only 1% of GM sales. No word on what Koenigsegg's plans for the Saab might be, but putting the company's 4.8 liter twin supercharged V8 into the Saab Aero X concept will likely end hunger and bring about world peace. It's just a suggestion. And is the US bound Lotus Evora a contender for the Porsche 911 sports car crown or just another V6 powered wannabe? According to new documents leaked this week, the mid-engine Toyota powered Evora could be as serious as kidney failure. A spec sheet published on fan site Lotus Enthusiast reveals the latest from the house of Colin Chapman could be the sleeper hit of the year. Horsepower from the Avora's 3.5 liter V6 is modest at 276, but at just over 3,000 pounds, it's enough to get the Avora from 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds and up to a top speed of 162 miles per hour. That's not quite enough to topple the 911's crown, but the Avora does manage over 30 miles per gallon making it a sports car even the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration will love. And damn right. And with Fiat taking control of Chrysler's toys this week, some were wondering what would happen to that sports car named after a snake. You know the one. That one. Edmunds Inside Line says the Dodge Viper survived Chrysler's bankruptcy. Now its brand, factory, and other bits are under Fiat's command. While the company had fielded offers of up to 35 million bucks for Viper, none of them reportedly passed the smell test. There's no word yet from Fiat bosses on the Viper's future, but it's clear Michigan entrepreneur Scott Devon will likely need a new donor car for his Devon GTX. That's the formerly Viper-based sports car Devon plans to unveil at the Pebble Beach Concourse de Elegance later this year. And there's a new traffic cop eyeballing dangerous drivers in the Siberian city of Omsk. It's Brad Pitt. No, it's not the sequel to Seven Years in Tibet, and it's not really even Pitt at all. Just a cardboard cutout. It's just the latest attempt by Siberian officials in what's becoming an endless battle against speeding in that region. Traffic accidents in Russia are among the highest in Europe. Authorities say the full-size cutouts are not only cutting down on speeding, but some drivers are slowing down to shake hands with the star. Apparently, the next campaign will target drunk drivers. But do All right. You can follow all the latest FLD shenanigans on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash fastlanedaily. Bow! Oh! Twitter's bouncy. Alright. And don't forget to subscribe to Fast Lane Daily on the YouTubes. Also, friend us on. Uh, Friendster. Nope, not Friendster, Facebook, but close. Tumblr. Next up, Commenter of the Week and FLD Tours. Coming up right after this. Derek D. doesn't know is that we've switched his regular cup of morning coffee with sulfuric acid. Oh, son of a bitch! Oh. Always fresh, every day, Fastlane Daily. You know what that means? It's the time of the week where we highlight a commenter of the week time! Comment! This week's comment comes from JuckU7666 in regard to this week's story on the most expensive cars to insure. He said, Hey FLD, I just looked at my insurance today, 1800 bucks with good student discount. Do I need to move to Candyland and ride a 
tricycle to get cheap insurance? Huh, well, Juck you. Yeah, your insurance is kinda high, not sure what you drive, but I'm guessing you're not 25 yet. When you turn 25, you get another pretty solid discount as long as you have a clean driving record. But I would not recommend moving to Candyland, dude. The roads are full of gumdrops, street signs are made of Mike and Ikes, no cell phone reception, and of course, they're all the sneak attacks from the hostile neighbor, Diabetes Land. Plus, honestly, dude, King Candy's just a dick. Look at him. Let's keep those comments flowing. We read them, we rock them. Now it's time for our weekly car review FLD tours. This week, JF Musial takes the new Mazda Miata MX-5 out for a spin. JF, do what you do. Summer is here and we've got a convertible. How great. Today on FLD tours, we're driving this, the Mazda Miata MX-5. Quite possibly one of the best entry level sports cars in the world, in my opinion. Can't wait to drive it. Oh God, I wish I wasn't so tall. <laughs> What I'm driving today is the top of the line MX-5. It's got the power retractable hardtop, it's got the limited slip differential, it's got the sport package, and everything else that comes with the base model. The new MX-5 produces about 170 horsepower, which is not quite different than any of the previous two generations. Not like other cars where you add more weight and the car gets heavier and that 170 horsepower really means less. They've actually kept the weight on this car relatively the same as the previous generations. Point, turn in, hit apex, accelerate a little sideways, and a smile just lights up. <laughs> it's all about performance. It's all about getting the job done. And everything in this cockpit gets the job done. There's no unnecessary buttons or tools, no unnecessary instruments that tell you things you'll never need to know. It's all the basics. My visibility is clear. You can see everything around me. The steering wheel feels great. Pedals are perfect, perfect for heel towing. The gear shift, the best part, it's notchy. Quick shifts, get the job done. And this handling is phenomenal. Oh! I've never had so much fun in a car before. Everything you do, it just feels right. You turn the traction control off and you are right at the essence of driving. It feels like you are driving something that is connected by rails to the road. So I could go on right now and give you the specs of this car and everything else. You don't need to know that. You just need to know that this is the perfect entry level sports car on the market today. This is FLD Tours. I'm Jeff Musial. Go look at the stats at the end. And we've been driving the Mazda Miata MX-5. Wow, JF, how'd you fit yourself in that car? You love that car so much, why don't you marry it? Well, that about does it for Fast Lane Daily for this week. I'm Derek D. If any of you guys are in Belmar, New Jersey this weekend, how about your boy? I'll buy you a beer. Pick for 21. Have a good weekend. I'm out of here. Oh, hey, oh. I learned that from Bob Schumann. <laughs>